Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the fifth episode of the second season of Kobayashi Sun Chino May Dragon. And last episode, we had a lot of fun because we got to go to the amusement park. I also got to showcase some Elma character development and some great Toru Elma just bonding, keeping the peace together. Our Harmony Dragon and Chaos Dragon. An unexpected combo, but I'd say they, they worked pretty well together, <laughs> keeping the peace. You know, those delinquents, they just have no chance against Toru or, or Fafnir or just any of the dragons, really. So, yeah, this episode, we're starting off outside the shopping district, so I'm pretty curious to see exactly what we're here for. So, let's find out. Three, two, one, play. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what did I walk in on? <laughs> she started it. <laughs> and we worked so well together last episode. We're gonna have a story time here. I mean, I would love a flashback about their first meeting. <laughs> I mean, as much as I love the opening, did you really have to cut that off? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, if we're gonna... I mean, if anything, cutting off there implies it's gonna be a somewhat long flashback. flashback. So, I would love that. So. <laughs> I still can't believe she wears a cheerleader outfit. Yeah, that's a shot I was thinking of earlier. Yeah, when we saw Toru Sandy area, like that shot of the opening came to mind. Okay, we're back at this very cool looking city. Ah, royal succession to dispute. Those are the worst. <laughs> and I, I'm offended by that. Oh, priestess. <laughs> Some high expectations. <laughs> How dare she? Oh, wow, that was actually a really cool shot. Wasn't even over yet. <laughs> can, can, I, can I watch that animation sequence again? I actually barely pay attention to what Tori was saying because I was too fixated on it. But... I mean, how much animation budget did that little bit take in itself? <sighs> yeah, that is our, that is our Elma. Just very interesting setting to see her in. I, I didn't, I honestly didn't know she was a priestess. <laughs> I mean, it looks like Toto mostly just has animosity towards her from the beginning, as far as I can tell. <laughs> we have better security in this place. You really don't look like you're about to laugh. <laughs> but then she does know her, too. Spoken like a true harmony dragon. <laughs> Lazy harmony dragons. But I'll take it if they're offered. 
I don't think anyone would say that. Not even, not even sharks. <laughs> of course she does. That's also true. Yeah, she also had that thing with the other human and the other flashback from season one. Man, the animation this entire scene has been so good. Oh. <laughs> Would you like to drink with me, Toru? <laughs> <laughs> Back to that. Man, just... She seems so different now. Like the atmosphere around her. Just chomping a sandwich. In the modern era. Our world. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty into the story too. Can we continue? <laughs> A few decades. Okay, so that's what they meant by not trying to kill each other initially, but. <laughs> Jeez, Toru. <laughs> I guess this is our falling out. Apparently, it's not going to be. So he had to crush it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think she's... <laughs> yeah, this is where it starts. This is the first time we've really seen a dragon form, too. Like in, like in action. <laughs> I... Hey, don't you get that, Toru? <laughs> Headbutt. Oh, Pasha can like shoot an energy blast. Oh, oh, oh damn. <laughs> yeah, they did say they're about evenly matched power wise, so. Oh my god. Just, oh, I can almost feel that. Imagine just getting like choke hold by a dragon. It's being thrown around. <laughs> oh god, this is. Oh, it's such a cool fight. I can see. Holy crap. I can see how you could sink some islands through this, through this level of conflict. So yeah, that it definitely does. It does re definitely recontextualize Elma's initial talk about not wanting to interfere and all that. Salary man has no time to to alter the world. <laughs> I know you were, it's Toru. I mean she's like a Kobayashi glutton. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I would say they get along. You know, in their own way. And there's a lot of skin chip going on right now.
<laughs> we got a wonderful circle of friends now. Ooh, hello. <laughs> there's there's Elma with some food. Are you gonna throw it at her? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, well, I guess she was giving her a present, not trying to be mean. I guess I just misinterpreted it. My bad. It's gonna it's gonna walk on by. Could at least like greet it or something, but together with you, well if we get along. <laughs> Back to you, Lulu. See how she's doing. <laughs> Made in love. What a concept. Are you bored? <laughs> goro, 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 goro. Yeah, I think she's bored. <laughs> Don't make a mess, at least. And they say Harmony Dragons were the lazy ones. <laughs> okay. I was kind of waiting for that. Could you just wear what looks like a work uniform in the opening? So I've been kind of waiting for that. <laughs> I was about to say the exact same thing. Almost word for word. <laughs> I think we have... I think we have enough dragons there, thank you. <laughs> uh. <coughs> I'm assuming it's a fast food restaurant. At least that's what the uniform looks like to me that we see in the opening. <clears throat> Back to the shopping district. I love smiles every day. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, everyone likes Toru. Are you sure? <laughs> That's also kind of how it goes. <laughs> okay, that's uh, understandable, but kind of messed up. <laughs> Yeah, this place has a lot of laws and stuff. Did she find some place? Or no, she found people. <laughs> I guess she's making friends. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> rip, let her rip, Beyblade. <sighs> A bottle shop. Okay. <laughs> Where are you going? Are you gonna work here? Looks like a nice enough place. Kind of looks like one of those, uh, what do you call them? Dagashia? Kind of looks like one of those. <laughs> I was waiting for it and I got it. Ida. I don't remember her. But I'll take your word for it. Maybe you could use a helping hand around the shop. Yeah, you can't disappoint the young ones. It's your time to step up, Yudulu. Yeah, Dagashi, okay, she confirmed it there. <laughs> Old enough, I assure you. <laughs> 
Like oh, that's true, yeah, we didn't reveal any specifics. Please get her out of get her get her out of our house. That's all we ask. Give her something to do. Blow in her head to a human. <laughs> okay. That's the end of it, okay. <laughs> That's what it was. If Alma could get a job, you'll, you'll be fine. Are you having second thoughts? Kobayashi, encourage your head pats. <laughs> I don't think Toru approves of this. <laughs> so, so where's my head pad, damn it? Ow. Just poor Toru. <laughs> Kobayashi, please head pad. I... Okay. That was a shift from the sandy desert. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be that way. And <laughs> right back where she started. You can try to push her way all you want. She will always find her way back. Yeah, acceptance. Yeah, that was a nice little bit there. Yeah, despite what they say, they clearly do get along. Oh, that's his grandmother. Okay. I don't talk it though. Is he gonna be in a like a relevant character going forward? <laughs> like to the level of Taki at least, you know? <laughs> well the girl is pretty pretty big. <laughs> uh it's not the word I would use for it. Also he has no idea what he was dealing with. <laughs> There she is! <laughs> World class right there. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's what she's gotta tell people. You have no idea. Yeah, I just walked in. Said, give me a job. She gave it to me. <laughs> Just, you, why would you think that? Just, same people just need to make a bit of extra money. I like, okay, not, not, not right here. Uh, we're just like right in the front of the shop. Anybody can just walk in. <laughs> so, man, this dynamic is so much like what I've seen in like a million other shows. And yeah, it never really existed in this show until now. It's kind of funny. <laughs> That's just right there. <laughs> I need I need your help. But yeah. Quite clearly. <laughs> There's no need to deny it. What's clear is clear. <laughs> How hard is it to to work in a dagashia? <laughs> does that does that shock you? <laughs> what do you mean? Why? It's just just. I don't think she had much control over it. <laughs> what? Fl what? Flame sex? Uh, I'm sure they are. 
together they probably weigh more than you do. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way to know for sure. Fair enough. You're gonna go right in. <laughs> With a soft landing like that, I'm, I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> How often is she gonna call him that? There's probably gonna be a running thing going forward. <laughs> but did she ever hold them? Did, did we skip past that part? I, I want to know how much they weighed. Oh well. That's probably the perfect place to work then. It's like a more wholesome version of Shoujo Ramane. I'm glad she got his trust so quickly. <laughs> Wasn't Toru also second to Kobayashi? How many seconds can you have? Okay, back back to this. I love all the cool scenery shots we have with these flashbacks. I think I recognize this from the opening too, like the sky and stuff. Because yeah, that's just beautiful. <laughs> I cue red-haired girl to be my master. So Toto wants. That's what she gets. <laughs> that is her biggest defining characteristic. <laughs> Aww. Wow, that was... What a great thing to end out the episode, huh? <laughs> yeah, they are clearly... Friends. I mean, sure, they try to kill each other sometimes, but... And that's our, our flashbacks, but still. But still. But still. I wonder if this season's ever going to have a not-amazing episode. Because so far, it just it hasn't done that. It actually was about the time when I was thinking maybe we should probably get back into Yududu. Because we, you know, introduced her. Which we had to take a couple episodes to do that. But since we didn't want to, you know, be too lopsided on one character, of course, we had to do other things. But also, eventually, you know, to get back to Yududu so she can really, like, fully get a foothold in this world. Like, really find a place for herself, right? So, I feel like this is, like, the perfect time to do that. I barely even touched my water, that's how sucked into the episode I was. In fact, I literally hadn't opened it yet. Ugh. The dancing is just so adorable. I, I think Elma's might be my favorite, it's hard to say. Okay, <clears throat> that was that was the uh, fifth episode of the second season of Kobayashi Made Dragon Chi. No, yeah, that's <clears throat> that's what this was. So, yeah, this episode we actually got some really good Elma Toru backstory stuff, right? I mean, Elma for the most part, like there hasn't been a lot more to her character beyond just she likes to eat. She's a harmony dragon. She tried to avoid interference as best she could when she first got here. And she's obviously grown closer to, to Kobayashi, right? And she found a place for herself in this world through, uh, through, you know, working in the same place as Kobayashi, right? That's kind of what we've known about her. But yeah, we didn't really get much like into her actual backstory. All we really knew was that she apparently had some kind of relationship with Toru. Like they were, they butt heads a lot. That's, that's, about, that's about what we knew, right? But uh, yeah, definitely <clears throat> this episode made it very clear that they had a very... <clears throat> A very deep, intricate 
past a lot of like clashing of ideals which you could guess i mean harmony dragon chaos dragon right but we got more like specifics on here and uh apparently they did not try to kill each other right off the gate i guess toru had a little bit of a period of trying to you know uh, see how things go right until eventually deciding like no just broke everything said your way of thinking's wrong and uh just triggering the element to the point where she transforms we have a literal cool amazing dragon battle which i love to see we had like biting punching it was it was great i, I loved it thoroughly also just a lot of good shots of elma throughout the flashback like especially like the bed you know just all the little minute animation stuff just like slowly getting out of the bed the bed itself looked great <clears throat> all the animations around there look great like facial expressions like everything around that like slight movements however you want to describe that all of it was just so well animated that it was just so amazing to watch right so really enjoyed the inter interactions there and it was interesting because they were like bouncing back from that to the them currently them so we could like compare and contrast kind of like how much things have changed since then right just man it was so cool seeing elma's actual dragon form and like her transforming into it right man that fight just full i kind of wish it went on longer but yeah, I really did enjoy all the, the Elma Toru flashbacks or interactions. Those were all really enjoyable. But that was only half the episode. The other half was actually Iduru, Iduru because she kind of has to find something to do, right? B besides Kobayashi, right? Toru obviously not going to be too accepting of that. So she's just like blazing around the house, rolling around, probably reading manga, watching TV. Just, you know, just not really doing much. So we had to try to go get her a job. That was the idea. And we went to the shopping district to do it. I wasn't quite sure where she was going to work. Like, I knew we saw her in the apron and stuff, like, in the opening. So, it, it somewhat narrowed down what she could do. But it still wasn't enough to, her, to really guess. I, I had this mental image just of her flipping burgers at a fast food place. That was clearly not what it was. We go, we have a candy shop instead. Which, uh, yeah, perfect opportunity. Because the girl, that the, the lady that runs it just, like, broke her leg. And she, she could use the help. Iduru stepped up, said, hey, can I help? Uh, Toru helped make that all happen too, like, you know, and it, she she got accepted, right? So that was pretty cool, and it's ideal for her because, yeah, you, you know, because the children aspect, so definitely I'd say pretty good fit for her, and she, from what little bit of her actually on the job that we saw, she seemed like she was pretty pretty competent, right? Even that one boy, like her grandson, was in the end, you know, seemed to be convinced that she is worthy of the position. So yeah, he definitely is a new character, right? Uh, Take, Take something, Ta Taketo, right? Very pretty char generic looking character design, but yeah, this I had, a, I had a feeling as soon as you brought up that we would have like a new a new pair, right? Because the show has a lot of those, you know, Shota, Lukua, Fafnir, Takia, Kobayashi, Toru. Uh, there might be a couple other ones, but yeah, like the show or yeah, Saikawa Kana, like the show has a lot of pairs, right? Where a lot of we have to have a lot of specific interactions with each other. So it does feel like it's been about time that we added a new one to that. And we did. And this is, I mean, this is probably the most like um, generic of uh, cliche of, of the, of the pairs, right? You know, this uh, teenage boy just living his life. And then suddenly this beautiful girl suddenly kind of gets thrust into his life all of a sudden has little to no shame just trying to change out in the middle of the front of the the front of the shop you know the shop that children come to by the way just no to care in the world and talk it he does all that you know blushing like what are you doing go go i go somewhere else for that but babaka and then she calls him a pervert like if you've seen a few hundred anime you, you've seen this sort of thing a lot <clears throat> keep in mind i'm not complaining about it or anything like that i'm just saying how it is this uh it's fun it's fine I, I i could enjoy this as much pretty much as much as i enjoy the other the other pairs especially because this is more fresh than the other ones right so so a lot you can do with it but yeah you is definitely an interesting one for sure so and also yeah since i just a place that kids go obviously kana and psycho up it's a place for them to go hang out so we have an excuse to to, to come here every once in a while you know just hang out have a good time buy some candy another you know, good stuff See, I think that's about all I wanted to say. Just a lot of good stuff. I know I've said that before, but I don't know what more to say about it, really. I feel like I talked more in the previous episode. I don't know. I mean, we had the one head pet scene. I don't really have much to say about it, but it was it was quite funny to watch. I don't think I don't think Toro ever got the head pet in that scene either. So it's just quite uh, quite tragic. But yeah, I am really glad just the show is back. I mean, we're almost halfway through this season, which is 
I don't, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it, so I'm, I'm not going to. But yeah, I really enjoyed this episode. If you like this uh, video I did, like button, subscribe, Patreon, comment, that, that sort of stuff. But yeah, bye-bye.